so as straightforward as this question is, the actual math that we'll end up doing, very straightforward, the numbers that we get, nice whole numbers the whole way through, no crazy numbers, the steps all make sense, except the beginning. It's quite possible you're looking at this and it makes absolutely no sense to you. That's going to happen over the course of this chapter. It didn't happen that much in the first chapter because most of the questions literally just said factor, simplify, solve, factor, simplify, solve. Here, it's not going to be necessarily as obvious what you're supposed to do or what the question is. You have to sort of decode the information. So as we go through these practice questions, that might be the challenge. The challenge is not the math. The challenge is figuring out a starting point for you. So as you read through this, let's try to decode this together if you're stuck. Fundamentally, if we're working with a linear function, you need to find the rule. We have to get the rule, and we know the rule of a linear function is y is equal to ax plus b. That means we have to get an a value, and we have to get a b value. The a is our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our b is y1 minus ax1. We have that in our lesson. So fundamentally, in order to answer whatever question it is here, we need to find the a, and we need to find the b. Uh, that need to mind? Thank you. So to find the A, normally we do a calculation. Here we don't have to because we're literally told what it is. The rate of change of this linear function is 5. Okay, A is 5. No calculation needed, it's given to us. Okay, the next part is B. Now B is not given to us, B we have to figure it out. And to help us figure this out, we have this thing right here, and this is likely the problem that some of us are encountering, is this function notation. So let's talk about this function notation again, because we spoke about this yesterday. If you need to write this down, please do on a memory aid or on your notes if you need to. If you don't know what this means, let me write it differently. This is the same thing as me saying x is negative 3 and y is 2. It's the same thing. Some of you may actually prefer seeing this written as a coordinate point of negative 3, 2. So this and this and this are all identical to each other. If you already knew that, then don't worry about it. If you didn't know that, then maybe jot that down somewhere because we'll see that for sure multiple times over the course of this year. How does that help us? Well, to find our B value, as we said in our lesson, our B value is Y1 minus AX1. Our y is right there, 2, minus our a we found earlier was 5, or we got it earlier, and our x is negative 3. So that's what we want to do to find your b. Remember, for those of us who are doing your b differently, no problem. Just make sure you're, show, you're able to show your work in your file. So we calculate, we get 17. So here's your a up here that was given to us. Here's your B right there. We found that. We now have what we need to find the rule. Now, it's true the question did not ask us to find the rule, but we need to find it. Because once we have the rule, we can start working with the rule. So we have the A, we have the B. Let's write the rule. Y is equal to the 5 and then the plus 17. So why is that wrong? I think it's obvious, but maybe it's not. Why is that rule wrong? Sultan? I forgot the x. That's absolutely a match chill mistake. So don't forget the x there. So y is equal to 5x plus 17. Now that we have this rule, let's continue the question. I'll sneak up back up to the top here. The question was asking us to find the value of f at negative 4. This thing right there. So I just finished explaining what this meant, so hopefully we can decode what this means, what you're trying to find. And if you're not sure, let's do that over here. f of negative 4, this means when x is negative 4, what's your y value? This thing inside the bracket is acting like your x. It's kind of the same thing as saying like, in a coordinate point, you have the x, but you don't know the y value. It's the same thing. So if we have the rule, let's replace negative 4 into the rule where I see the x, and we calculate. So I'll take my rule, I'll replace negative 4 in for the x, and we calculate, and we get our final answer is negative 3. That's it. 
Now it's possible maybe I didn't give you enough time to do that. But if you didn't know how to start the question, that was likely kind of the, the hiccup, the speed bump was just figuring out how to start the question. Because the rest of this stuff we've been doing for a couple of days, if not last year as well. Questions on this first one? Okay, then let's change it up. Let's take a look at question two. Again, no need to write this down. I think maybe just read through it and go from there. So, again, if you're having problems, it's probably not the actual math. We know we're going to eventually have to find a rule here. Now, I will point out that how I'm showing this is how I think the average student would do it. But there's always different ways of doing any of your work this year. If you're doing it differently, no problem. Just make sure that it's mathematically valid and it's clear. But I'll typically show it sort of the same way, question after question, so that you can get used to writing sort of a, a clean solution. So most of us are going to go ahead and find a rate of change and find a rule and do all that. Well, if you're going to do that, that means to get a rule, you have to have an X and a Y in it. But nowhere in this question is there an X or Y anywhere. So the first starting point, really, for me, should be to decide what the X and Y represent. If you're going to use variables, define the variables. That should be your starting point. My variables are going to have to deal with the salary and the sales. The question is, which one's which? X is my independent, Y is my dependent. So based off of this, it absolutely makes a difference which one is which. Jesse? is daily sales, that means my dependent is salary. Yeah. Even if you're not sure, just give it a second to think about that. If you said the salary was independent, your X, and the daily sales was dependent, your Y, that means in this ice cream shop, the daily sales would depend on how much they're paying their staff, which makes no sense at all. In this case, how much they're paying their staff depends on how much they're selling for the day. That makes more sense. So your X is the daily sales, and the Y is the salary. Do you need to define them? Absolutely. If the question doesn't define variables and you decide to use X's and Y's, you need to define what X and Y represent. So that should be your starting point. The next step I'm going to do, some of us will skip, but I'm going to make sure it's super clear. On Monday, 2900 is my X. So I'm going to get a coordinate point of 2,900 for the X and 132 for the Y. You do not have to write that. I'm writing it so that it's super clear. On Tuesday, I have 3,152 is my X and 139.56 is my Y. Again, you don't have to do that, but now it makes it super clear that this is my X1, my Y1, my X2, and my Y2. So when I start doing my calculations, I'm not going to sort of make a silly mistake as to what X and what Ys I've chosen. So I'll take it from that step. I think most of us were able to do that step already. I think a lot of us probably just forgot to actually define the variables. You didn't actually say what X and Y represented here. So from here, let's continue. Let's find the A, Y2, minus Y1 over x2 minus x1 and we get 3 over 100. 0 0.03 is the same thing. So there's your a. Again I'm assuming we can use our calculators here. To find the b, y1 minus my a times the x1 and you get a nice whole number 45. And just to decode what this means, this means the 45 is the base salary and the 3 over 100 is the percentage of commission sales. This means that Paolo, if Paolo walked into the store and it was horrendous weather outside and no one came into the shop to buy any ice cream, he'd still get a salary of $45 for sitting there and just playing on his phone. But as soon as someone walks in, he's going to make 3% of the commission on the sales. So if uh, someone spends, I don't know, a buck on, uh, a buck on ice cream, uh, he'd, get, he'd make three cents on that. So that's what commission is compared, uh, compared to the daily sales, or compared to the wage, sorry. Some of you maybe even have a job that you are in commission on already. So as a rule, we've got the three over 100X 
plus 45, which again is another math jail mistake. Let's try not to make these silly math jail mistakes. Where's the mistake here? Jesse? B equals? Nope. Oh, and A equals R Y. We, we got there eventually. So it's not rule equals. So don't write rule equals. It's Y equals. That's the actual rule right here. It's not the answer to the question. It's just we're going to need that. You're going to need that to continue. So once we have the rule, I think my camera's frozen. Yeah, there we go. Once we have the rule, we can go ahead and answer the question. I'm just going to scroll back up. The question was saying Paolo earns 176.04, what are the daily sales? That is a Y value, and we're looking for an X value. So replace 176.04 in for the Y, so we can find the X. And I'll do that down over here. I'll replace 176.04 in for the Y. And for some of us, this now becomes quite intimidating. We're not sure what to do from here. If you're not sure what to do, then let's go through those steps. We need to isolate for x, so I'm going to subtract 45 from here. 176.04 minus 45 is 131.04. Then I have to get rid of the 3 over 100, which means I'm going to divide both sides by 3 over 100. So if I divide both sides by 3 over 100, divide that by 3 over 100, and divide this by 3 over 100, we get an X value. It's 4,000 someone. Does anyone have that number? It's open. 4368, that was it. There you go. I don't have to see this line. I have to see that. And then you can skip ahead to your answer. I don't have to see that middle bit if, you're not, uh, if you don't have to worry about it. So there's question two. So question two, the same steps. We still have to find the rule and plug something in, just like number one. But the actual question was presented differently, so we had to decode it differently. So that was number two. Let's do number three. Same steps, the decoding is different. The question is presented in a different way. So there's number three. I'll give you a couple minutes, then we'll take a look at it. Okay. So. Uh, as I was mentioning, we need to find a rule. To find the rule, we need to have two points. We clearly have point Q. We're trying to find point R. That means we don't have it, but we have point P. The mistake that some of us made is point P, and we spoke about this in the class yesterday. Point P is on the axis, which means it has no height. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It's on the axis, it's flat, which means its Y value is zero. So the number that's given to you is the X value. So some of you had that flip-flop and put the 0, negative 4. No, no, it's negative 4, comma 0. Point Q is 1, negative 2. You do not have to actually tell me the coordinate point. You can absolutely just skip and go ahead and find the A. So let's do that. To find the A, there's my x1, y1. And there's my x2, y2. If you want to flip it and you want to call point Q x1, y1, that's fine. And you want to call point P x2, y2, no problem. So you can absolutely flip this. But you can't mix and match. You can't say that's x1 and y2 or x2 and y1. So if you're going to stay with 1, stay with 1s or 2s. OK, so let's go ahead and calculate this. On the top of my fraction, y2 minus y1 is negative 2 minus 0. On the bottom, I've got a 1 plus 4, which gives me a negative 2 over 5. OK, so there's your a. To find your b, it's y minus ax, so I've got my y is 0, minus my a is negative 2 over 5, and my x is negative 4, and we get a negative 8 over 5. There's your b. And it doesn't hurt just to take a quick second, especially if you're hesitant about your numbers and whether or not you're right or wrong, just take a look at your diagram. Does it make sense? Does it make sense that the B value is negative 8 over 5? That's negative 1.6. So does it make sense that it's touching the Y axis right here at negative 1.6? Uh, yeah, it does. Because if that's negative 3, that kind of looks like it's about halfway-ish. So yeah, negative 1.6 makes a lot of sense. So there's your A and there's your B. My rule is Y is equal to negative 2 over 5X minus 8 over 5. Okay, so that's... The fundamental key to every question is to find the rule somehow. It's not the answer. 
It's just we're going to need that so that we can continue the question. So find the rule as your big, big starting point. Once we have the rule, we can then work with it. We're trying to find the x coordinate of point R because we're given the y coordinate. You can see the negative 3 that's given to you right here. That's how low the y point or the point R is. So that's the y value. So basically, we're being told that point R has some unknown x, but the y value is negative 3. So take the negative 3, put it into the rule where you see a y, and we'll calculate the x. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add 8 over 5, divide by negative 2 over 5, and we get a 7 over 2. 3.5 is your x value. So point R is 7 over 2, comma, negative 3. If you're not comfortable doing this step to this step, because I skipped the step here. I showed it earlier, but I skipped it here. Then ask me. Ask me about this so that we are cool with that. But that would be your final answer at the bottom right here. <coughs> Questions? Sultan. You have your B is positive 8 over 5? But you still got an answer of negative 3? You made two mistakes that cancel each other out. You fell down the stairs and somehow stood landed on your feet. So there's mistakes there. I can come look at that in a second. Andrew? Um, that's, that's good, yeah. Ah, let me show it then. So get from here to here. Let's do that step together. I'm going to add 8 over 5 over here. So if I add 8 over 5, it disappears. Negative 3 plus 8 over 5 is negative 7 over 5. In your head or on a calculator, either or. So I'm adding 8 over 5. Now I'm going to divide by negative 2 fifths. Now if this looks intimidating, this division right here, it shouldn't be. We should be comfortable enough at this point with our, uh, with our calculators to do this. In fact, Andrew, do you mind if I borrow your calculator for a second? Because I can see that's one of the the better ones. Let's say you want to do this calculation, the negative 7 over 5 divided by negative 2 over 5. On this particular calculator, and those of you that have the fraction button in your calculator looks like that, you can type in a fraction, inside of a fraction, inside of a fraction. Let's do this. On the top, I've got a negative 7 over 5. So let's see, negative 7, where's my negative? Negative 7 over 5, that's the top. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. On the bottom is a negative 2 over 5, so negative 2 over 5. And it looks pretty intense, but 7 over 2, which is what we said our answer is going to be. So on this, you can put fractions inside fractions inside fractions inside fractions inside fractions. It's like fraction inception, so you can do that. So we get that a 7 over 2 from that. Thank you. Okay, let's do our last question. Number four. I'll give you a second. Digest it, see how it goes. Um, so I think most of us, if you're graphing, most of us are doing the shortcut. Some of you are using the table. But since most of us are using the shortcut, I'll do what I think the average student would do, is get the Y by itself. Once we get the Y by itself, then we can, it's, it's easier to graph it, at least from there. Now, to get the y by itself, I have to move everything around so that I have a y on one side. Most of us like seeing the y on the left-hand side. If you like seeing on the right-hand side, that's fine, but I think most of us like seeing on the left-hand side. So I'm going to move the 36y over, which means I'm going to add it to the left-hand side. Now, to get rid of the 36, I'll divide everything by 36. 24 divided by 36 is 2 thirds. Don't forget the x. Negative 90 divided by 36 is negative 5 over 2. So there's my rule in standard form. So if I now want to make my graph for this, I clearly don't have graph paper, which means I'm going to need to take a second and make sure it's as accurate as I can. I'll use my ruler, not just the edge of your calculator case. <laughs> and I do need axes here because I don't have graph paper, so I'm going to eyeball this as best as I can. If your eyeball is not very great, then don't eyeball it. I can see here that here is my B value. My B is negative 5 over 2. That's my starting point. Negative 5 over 2 is negative 2.5. 
So on the y-axis, I'll start with a dot at negative 2.5. My a is 2 thirds. That's my rise over my run. It tells me I'm either going to go up or down, but always to the right, in case you didn't know. So either up or down and always to the right. In this case, it's a positive number, so I'm going to go up 2 and right 3. Well, when I go up 2, I have to consider the fact that I'm not exactly at a nice point here. I'm halfway in the block. So when I go up 2, I'm not going 1, 2 to there. That doesn't make any sense. I need to go from here and go up to 1 to the middle, 2 to the middle. And now when I go over 3, I'm going to go four blocks. 1, 2, 3, which gives me my second point right here. That's halfway right there and perfectly lined up right there. If that's a problem for you, then either address it or maybe go back and use tables instead. We connect the lines or connect the dots, and we have our graph. Here's question number four.